Welcome to Sit and Chat Online. My name is Purity. You're watching the Youth Cafe and it's a joy to have you come back to watch our videos. We are excited that you could actually be part of what is happening on our Sit and Chat Online platforms. And in today's uh, video, we are just going to explore the, the subject of fear and how God has already taken care of our fears. Now, did you know that in some quarters, uh, fear is an acronym for false evidence appearing real. Most of the things that people fear actually are false. They are things, their imaginations, they happen to be things that look real in, in, in such a way that it's very difficult actually to tell somebody when they are afraid that whatever they are afraid of will not happen or is not real. Now, in the real life experiences, people fear different things. Some people fear to be rejected. Some people fear death. Uh, they are afraid of dying. Some people are afraid of failure. But the biggest thing that somebody said that we should be afraid of in this life is fear itself. Why? Because fear can be very paralyzing. Fear can be very uh, it can actually be dehumanizing. It can reduce a human being to a level where they cannot live out to their full potential and to live out their purpose. Fear can be the biggest hindrance even to the greatest persons in the world. When fear checks in, their lives can, uh, can come to a standstill. Why? Because you're not able to progress, you're not able to function, and sometimes even the times when you hear people have murdered, people have committed suicide, it was just because of fear. And at the beginning, I began by saying that fear is false evidence appearing real. I would like us to read a, a portion of scripture from Isaiah chapter 41, verse 10, just to hear what is God saying about this subject matter. Because at one particular point in your life, if you're watching this video, in my life, even as I share this message, I have come to a point in life where I have been afraid. I have become afraid sometimes of real things and some other times of perceived things, false things, like we said. Now, God tells the children of Israel in Isaiah chapter 41, verse 10, and if you read the entire uh, chapter, the book of Isaiah chapter 41, uh, the subject matter is God, the helper of Israel. We are presented God to us as a great God, a God that is able to overcome, fight on behalf of the, his children. And at this particular point in time, in verse 10, he says, he tells them, uh, maybe we can read from verse 8. Verse 8 says, But you, Israel, my servant, Jacob, whom I have chosen, you descendants of Abraham, my friend, I took you from the ends of the earth, from its farthest corners, I called you and I said, you are my servant. I have chosen you and I have not rejected you. Then verse 10, so then do not fear. In fact, it is a command, it is not a request. God tells his children, do not fear, for I am with you. Do not be dismayed for I am your God. He says, I will strengthen you and I will help you. I will uphold you with my righteous hand. Now, one of the biggest fears, especially for the male gender, is failure. Many of men, they are afraid of failing. They are afraid of failing in their careers. They are afraid of failing in their uh, marriages. They are afraid of failing to be able to provide for their families. It is a cutthroat competition for men. They live in a world of competition. They are afraid of not being able to stand out uh, leading in, in their generation amongst their peers. They live in a competition. They are afraid of failing. On the opposite side, on the flip side rather, for the uh, women, many of them fear to be rejected. Women want to be appreciated, they want to be loved, and the biggest fear for any woman is rejection. 
However, those are just on top on the list. I'm just speaking from a psychological perspective, some of the major fears of both genders. But I can tell you for free that every person in life, whether woman or man, is afraid of failing. Now, what is God saying? He says, do not fear. Why? Because fear will stop you from living to your full potential. Fear will hinder you from achieving the greatest purpose that God has set out for your life. Fear will hinder you from setting out to beginning new things. Fear hinders one from standing out and, and just uh, 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 accepting that sometimes we fail, sometimes we win. And that is life. Because as long as you're human, you are not God because you're not all-knowing. You're not all powerful, you're not all omnipotent. Even if you have achieved your greatest things in life, at one particular point in life, you have either failed, you're either in a failure right now, or if you have not, then you must be very special. But I want to remind you that some time is coming when you will not be able to actually achieve what exactly you wanted to achieve. You will fail. But that does not minimize the power of God in your life. So do not be afraid even of failure. Do not be afraid of even being rejected. By the way, if Jesus himself was rejected, who are you to imagine that you will not be rejected? Whatever fear that is paralyzing you right now from progressing, from uh, living out your fullest potential, I came to call you out to rise above the fear because God says, do not be afraid, do not fear. Why? Because I, God, if you're his child, he's committed to help you out in your circumstance. Then he says, do not be dismayed. The other meaning of dismay is do not be disappointed. If you have been in a failure, if you have been, you've just come from one, you should not be disappointed, you should not be dismayed to a point where you cannot rise above that fear at the, that occasion and therefore you're afraid of doing a new thing. Remember today that the Lord God, your God, is able to help you to rise above every challenge, every circumstance that has come your way. In life, the only thing that sustains human beings um, to live on is hope. If you hear someone saying, that I want to kill myself, or I have attempted suicide, it means that their hope in anything in this life has been deemed, has been minimized by challenges, by circumstances. But we must allow ourselves to be captives of hope and not prisoners of fear. So I came to remind you that do not fear. Why? Because God himself has given a word. He has given a promise that he is going to uphold you with his right hand. He is going to strengthen you in your weakness because why else would you need God's strength unless you're weak? So if you have a weak point, then you are a very good candidate for God's help and for God's strength. So be encouraged. Rise above uh, your circumstances at this point in life. Do not allow yourself to be hindered by a false evidence that is appearing real. Do not al allow circumstances to, to be a wall between you and your progression and the blessing of God upon your life. My prayer for you is that if you've been watching this video, you are going to rise above the occasion and say, Lord, I take this word just the way you have uh, spoken and I run with it and then you'll be able to continue and succeed and thrive in wherever God has placed you in the marketplace. As a parent, you are not going to fail. God is going to help you to provide for your children. As a father, if you have gone through a, a heartbreak, God is going to raise you, strengthen you, raise you up, hold you. In fact, he's, he says with my right hand, I will uphold you, I will strengthen you with my heart. He's going to lift you up himself and help you out of every hole that the enemy has put you in. Thank you for watching Sitam Church Online. I believe and hope that you've been encouraged and I want to invite you to continue with this conversation uh, on our platforms. You 
you can like our pages uh, Facebook page you can follow us at the Instagram page and Twitter like our page there uh, subscribe to our YouTube channel send us some um, text and we are going to respond to you we are going to work with you in the journey of faith if you have not given your life to Jesus that is the beginning point we are going to pray with you and guide you and help you to make this critical decision in your life thank you for watching sit and church online we value you we pray for you and we believe that God is doing a new thing every time we share his message with you across our platforms. Thank you for watching. My name is Purity Murungi. God bless you.